So, we went to see Deadpool. We wanted to get this review up a lot sooner. Yeah, we went on opening weekend. But we got busy. Very busy. Just moved into our new apartment. Everything's set up, so we're cranking out the vids. And you can see some of it here. <laughs> Here's our Link wall decal. Our Marvel, which will hopefully be up on a wall soon. Yeah, it's very Marvel themed for this Deadpool review. So, before we jump into spoiler territory, just want to talk a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't seen the movie, I would personally say go watch it. Unless you're a small child, or you intend to bring a small child. Depending. <laughs> it may not be fit. But to each parent, their own. Yeah, I'm and, just saying to know what you're getting into before you bring a small child. It is R-rated and it deserves that rating. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make it a bad movie. No, no. But it does deserve it. Mm -hmm. And overall, I would highly recommend watching it. It is exactly what you would expect from a Deadpool movie. There's humor throughout. Mm -hmm. And a lot of non-stop action. It sounds like you're going to give a spoiler for your rating. It's kind of a rating. A rating to go watch it. <laughs> Direct from Crossfire Co-op mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, we went to see it at Arclay Ar in Pasadena, which I had never been to before. We no, actually... we saw, yeah, we saw Star Wars Episode Seven for the second time there. It was... Episode 7 was so good, we had to watch it again. Mm -hmm. I like our play, it's nice. Mm -hmm. We did a 3D... 3D? Yeah. Actually, we haven't done 3D. No, we didn't. Yet. Nope. Nope. We saw Star Wars in 3D the first time. Yeah. In 3D. The second time without. It was nice. You have to choose your seat. Like, I'm not necessarily a fan of that having to reserve your seat, but... I kind of actually enjoy it. Mm hmm it sucks that you need to pre-order mm -hmm. to get a good seat, mm -hmm. but at least if you order in advance, mm -hmm. at least online, mm -hmm. you're in and you're out. Well, the problem is more like, before at my other job, I could get a ticket voucher, but then I couldn't use that ticket voucher to buy the ticket online. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to the theater to get the ticket, but I couldn't go right before the movie started because all the seats would be gone. It's true. So I had to go before the movie started, get a ticket, either wait around or come back. But you don't have that job now. That's true. New job, new city. No movie passes. But. It's alright. I digress. To Deadpool. To Deadpool. So. Let's jump into some spoilers. If you haven't watched and you want to maintain spoiler free, cut the video now. Come back in a couple hours after you've watched it. <laughs> Leave us off. What's your take? So I didn't know very much about Deadpool before we went to see the movie. I knew kind of what to expect based on what different people had said. I wasn't incredibly excited about Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool just because he already plays the Green Lantern and I think it's unfair for one human to play two superheroes. But it's very clear that Ryan Reynolds' true superhero love is Deadpool. <laughs> that is apparent. Um, so he did a really good job. Um, as a cosplayer, I really appreciated the costume, like, it was really neat. It, it, you could tell, like, his boots, for example, were, like, someone's, like, normal work boots that he modded, and he, he goes through the process of creating his costume, and they show you how it evolves, but they don't show you how he does the last iteration of it, which, you know, who knows how they could do that. But, um, yeah, it's very much an origin story, it's very much a vengeance attempt story. It's uh, kind of a love story. I think it's a good way to do an origin story mm -hmm. though. Because while some of the origin stories get caught up in the story, mm -hmm. I feel like this movie never did. It didn't get caught up in the story per se, but it got caught up in the going forward, going backward narrative. It, it goes it's like a frame within a frame. There is a little a bit of jumping. Mm -hmm. I do like how, and this is 
um, what I've seen from the Deadpool comics mm -hmm. a little bit is how they broke break the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. How Deadpool is talking to you, mm -hmm. which kind of brings it back once they're jumping forward and backward. Yeah. And Deadpool's there walking you through the entire scenario. And I like that. I thought that was cool. Actually, the opening scene is really cool. It's a slow-mo. You're seeing, like, these really intricate details. And it slowly pans out. This, like, ballad music. And then you realize that it's this, like, car crash. <laughs> yeah, it's... And then you actually get to see that scene happen mm -hmm. right after that. Mm-hmm. And it's coming up with the different credits, and it's not your normal movie credits. No, it's like... <laughs> For the writers, it was the real heroes of the movie. The real movie. heroes of this movie. And that is true. I mean, mm -hmm. I think in order to bring Deadpool to a mass audience, mm -hmm. which it has, I mean, mm -hmm. it's setting records for already movie superheroes. Yeah, I heard the sequel was already greenlit before it mm -hmm. even premiered. It's way above what they were projecting. Mm -hmm. But I think they wrote Deadpool in a way where you can still kind of see that he is insane, mm -hmm. but not quite so insane that you can't just walk in and understand the movie, enjoy the movie. You like, know He's talking to the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really get that vibe. Like, I expected that he would have, like, multiple personalities mm -hmm. or something based on what I had heard, but I didn't really get that vibe. I got the vibe that he has no filter. That's for sure. Um, the Merc with the Mouth. But I didn't really get the vibe that he says like, oh, like, your crazy matches my crazy, like, he does some things that a normal person wouldn't do, but I didn't really get that vibe that he, he had mental issues. And I think they did a great job with the movie mm -hmm. of not touching too much on that. Mm -hmm. They did enough as fan service mm -hmm. in in order to kind of push that direction a little bit, mm -hmm. but not enough where someone that ha doesn't know Deadpool at all, mm -hmm. that just loves superheroes, couldn't go into the movie and still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. The more you know about the character, I think the more you probably take out of mm -hmm. the different small things that the movie like included. That's true. I love the scene with the two X-Men and Deadpool shows up in the mansion, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Why wow, you have this huge mansion, and this is all you can afford for the budget? Yeah. Is these two X-Men? They're like, it's like someone couldn't afford to, to have more X-Men come to the set. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, things like that that were really cool. And it, it just shows you, like, you wouldn't see that in your normal mm -hmm. superhero movie. Alluding to what he had to do for Wolverine to get the movie made. <laughs> I so want to see a Deadpool Wolverine movie. That would be so awesome. Very cool. Let's jump into our scores and then we'll talk a little more. Okay. The tough part. It is the tough part. If you and I end up giving this movie the same score, I'm going to be livid. <laughs> we haven't talked about what we're going to score this movie. We never do. We never do. Okay. It's that time again. Let's see him, Captain. <laughs> no! In case you can't see, this is Deadpool L and 9.0. The same score that Will here gave it. it. It's tough. If we would have done this review last weekend, mm -hmm. I probably would have given it an 8.5. Because we had just watched Star Wars? Not that, just like an instant reaction mm -hmm. to the jumping back and forth of the movie. Mm -hmm. To kind of like what you are talking about, how the scenes jump back and forth between present mm -hmm. day and in the past. I complain about it, but it's not poorly done, it's just frequently done. 
the more I've slept on the movie, though, mm -hmm. the more I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. As far as an origin story for me, it was really fun. I'm not sure it's the type of movie I would want to watch often, just because I think the humor in it would, for me, start to become the same. I think I would understand more of the humor if I watched it again. I didn't not understand it, it's just there are a lot of references that were made that I'm sure I didn't catch. And they're so quick. They're very quick. But, it's interesting. There it is, the average rating is 9.0. <laughs> By far the best marketing campaign. I would yeah. give them oh, yeah. the five stars, the marketing, 10. Marketing, yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, I really liked it. We talked about the marketing campaign in Ricochet 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Deadpool like lounging on the bench, Deadpool with a heart. Uh, yeah, they really made it intriguing. Like, there's no way this is a romance movie, but it kind of was. But there was also a lot of other things, mm -hmm. just like Deadpool, who was romantic and also funny and also a killer, but only of people worse than him. <laughs> One thing I find found interesting, and I didn't think about this until I have read some more things, mm -hmm. a lot of people were, I don't want to say upset, but intrigued that he was still going after the girl. Mm -hmm. That he was still in love with her and wanting to save her mm -hmm. after the whole going crazy because of his superpowers coming out and thing. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think that's part of the movie that people could relate to mm -hmm. that made the crazy antics mm -hmm. of Deadpool more real. Well don't like don't fool yourself. Like they clearly want to appeal to as many different audiences as possible. But I think they also want to bring Deadpool into the I wanna say Marvel universe, but really the X Men universe by Fox. Mm -hmm. Because I think with the Deadpool they created for their cinematic universe, he can be in a movie with Wolverine. He can be in a movie with any of the X-Men. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see a small cameo in the next X-Men movie. Just because he was relatable enough to the average moviegoer. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the small things like still chasing after the girl that kind of bring him back down to earth. Mm -hmm. Well, if he's going to chase after Francis, clearly he has to also chase after the girl. <laughs> I'm just saying. What were your thoughts of the X-Men that were used? I had never heard of the girl. Super teen nuclear warhead or something. Uh, Colossus I had heard of. I thought they had a really interesting dynamic. Um, because I don't know that I had ever seen Colossus featured in like the X-Men cartoon or anything that I've read, so it was interesting. He was the big, bulky guy who Deadpool could never hurt, and he has an accent, but he's also really conscientious of the world and how Deadpool needs to be an X-Men so he can help. And the nuclear teen warhead girl was really angsty and emo. I mean, even the opening credits say like, an angsty teenager, and like, what? A complete CGI character, and you're like, what are they talking about? Oh, it's them. Um, she had a, like, an attitude, just like a normal teenager, like, not like, oh no, I'm a mutant, what am I gonna do? But like an actual teenager. So that was really interesting, because I feel like in other X-Men movies, like, there's this, like, mutant issue, and that wasn't, I mean, there wasn't a mutant issue in this movie, but... It wasn't like mutants everywhere are under attack kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then she she comes around and I think it's really neat. So um, Her ability is super cool. Her ability is amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
I think she she probably has even more abilities that they didn't really showcase. Um, and and then Colossus, you know, he ends up fighting someone towards the end and he does get hurt. And you're just like, no, no way, like no one can hurt Colossus. There's no way. But it can. It was amazing being able to actually see Colossus in form. Mm -hmm. Like he had such small cameos in X2 and mm -hmm. the third X-Men. Well, if he was in them, I clearly didn't know. Yeah. Like I didn't even realize. Such small cameos. Mm -hmm. And to actually be able to see him in a movie. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even an X-Men movie. Mm -hmm. was awesome. Yeah. I have to think that in the next X-Men movie coming up later this year, they have to play some role. Mm -hmm. This was a great chance as kind of, not an origin story for those characters, mm -hmm. but a way to introduce them to the audience. Mm -hmm. To really get those characters a role before this next movie. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It's cool. Mm -hmm. And Stanley, of course. <laughs> I think this was his best cameo yet. Probably so. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, there you go. Dead Poo L 9.0. Unanimous. Unanimous decision. Go watch it if you haven't. I agree. Awesome movie. Can't wait for the sequel. All right, and don't forget to stay after the credits. Yes. Whoa! You made it to the end. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up below. And don't forget <laughs> to share. And you can also comment if you'd like to tell us something. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.